Here we go. All right. Welcome back, Universe, to Off the Rails Season 3. <laughs> we are now on the Big Laugh Comedy Network, everybody. All right. This week, we have Nyla Durrani, a freelance reality casting producer and associate producer of America's Got Talent, the Dong, Dong Show. All righty, <laughs> the Gong Show, Mass Dancer, and much more. Woo! All right, what are we giving away this week for liking and sharing? Let's see if we get a vintage off the rail shirt. Just oh, share great. it. Just share it. And hey, if you're looking to buy or sell a home, okay, maybe right. interested in a career in real estate, email Roy, Roy at CDHSR.com. Or give him a call, 414-235-0763. And if you want one of these things that says off the rails, go to <laughs> Cobell Banker Home Sale Realty Facebook page and just say off the rails sent me. This says off the rails. That means at any minute I can go off the rails and you can fuck off. <laughs> so get one of these. <laughs> so this is our season premiere. And... I guess we're going to start with a bad joke monologue. Who's ready for some bad jokes? Yeah. Do it. So we're going to have a new intro for that coming up soon, but don't worry about that. A Harvard professor says an alien visited him in 2017. He also admits that he hasn't shit right since. <laughs> <laughs> Good probe joke. <laughs> All right. Research shows that 2020 was the best year for dogs. If 2021 is anything like last year, it will be the best year for dog recipes. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> William liked that one. Okay. Uh, meteorologist Kelly Nicolau has been studying icicles and found out that nearly all of them contain bird poop. I'm just, there's not really a punchline. I just wanted to see all of your faces <laughs> over there realizing how much bird poop you've eaten. Ugh. I've done this my whole life. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. A weird prescription is going around the doctor community. They are smoking weed and taking seven Benadryl to get to sleep. That sounds like the alpha male challenge to me. If you can smoke weed, take seven Benadryl, and still get a boner, that is alpha. That is alpha. <laughs> wow. Wow. All right. Former Miss Virginia was declared dead from the poison nuke, but reportedly came back to life. If it wasn't bad enough, now we have to deal with gorgeous zombies. <laughs> Worse than all of that, with the lockdowns in effect, the man bun has returned. We just thought we lost it. People see a man bun, and I see a bartender that's going to ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> you know they made a Ken doll with a man bun? No. no. Yep. He comes with a tiny vape and crashes at Barbie's dream house until <laughs> he gets back on his feet. <laughs> A mysterious trapped energy has shut down infrastructure in Tel Aviv. Why don't they do what I do when I have trapped energy and just take a long shower? <laughs> Sometimes you got to feed the geese. <laughs> Indiana Town finally lifts a 50-year-old anti-hippie mass gathering ordinance. That's because they couldn't stop the mass gathering at the cemetery. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I like those O's. That's when you know it's a bad joke. <laughs> so dark. All right, I'll cheer everyone up. Well, with everyone staying home and not walking around, shoe cobblers are struggling. I prefer cherry or blueberry cobblers myself. <laughs> <laughs> that one was especially for Molly. Wait, where's the slow one? Oh, come on. <laughs> sperm kings an online sperm donation company is saying that the demand is too high especially for college educated sperm i'm sitting on a bag of 60 million sperm how am i supposed to afford to put them all through college <laughs> <laughs> a remorseful massachusetts man returns the sword he stole from a statue 40 years ago Police said, keep the sword, dude. That statue is a white guy from the 1700s. It ain't got long. 
And finally, a man jailed for snoring too loudly while sleeping in a McDonald's. Officers couldn't find an ID, but when they looked at his phone, he was watching off the rails. No. Oh, there you go. Hit it, Mo. All right. All right, welcome back, Universe, to Off the Rails Season 3. All right, this week we got Nyla Durrani. Nyla, how are you doing? I'm hanging in there. Hanging in there? I'm hanging in there. Associate producer for America's Got Talent. We're going to learn what it takes to get on the show and get some instant fame, maybe. And you said earlier I worked on the mask dancer. I, I've never worked on the mask to anything. I did work on I Can See Your Voice, which is also casting right now for season two. Well, where did you get that mask dancer from? Your know. freaking message to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I can did you just copy paste it? Is it my mistake? <laughs> I'm a new mom. <laughs> I forwarded whatever it was that you sent me. So. Oh, that's me then. Well, I'm sure you'll do some work for them. That's right. You know what we like to do first? What we like to do? We like to do the hot seat. We're going to put Nyla on the hot seat. We'll put her on the hot seat right away. Oh, God. Wow, yeah! The sound effects are amazing. It's 45 minutes long, just so they know. Just grab it in. So they last a long time. Yeah. <laughs> that one does. <laughs> All right, Nyla. You get the wrong order at a restaurant, but mm. it looks and smells really good. Do you still send it back or do you just eat it? Um, I think I've been in that situation and I just said, oh, screw it, I'll eat this. Um. <laughs> But if it has sausage on it, I will send the sausage back because I don't. I hate. I hate sausage. Man, this is a sausage fest at this table right here too. Put this back and bring me bacon instead. I'm thinking about breakfast, yeah. obviously. All right. Um, you guys, what are you doing? Anything? Oh me? Yeah. Um, if it look if it looks and smells great, I'll, I'm open to it. <laughs> Trying something else is not what I ordered. As long as they don't charge me. More, more, right? So if you bring me the wrong order and my other order was more expensive, you're going to charge me for the. I cheap. agree with that. Yeah, I'm sending it back just to be difficult. <clears throat> and then I don't like sending things back. I really don't because you don't know what's happening in that kitchen. And when it comes back to you, I'm, eh, I would prefer not to send anything back. Okay, 100% agree with that as well. Yeah. So is that because you ordered a uh, French toast with a uh, powdered sugar and you got the powdered sugar one time? I love powdered sugar. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I wear it. I get it all over the front of me. Uh, when you were pregnant with your son that you have there, you get any weird food cravings or food combo cravings? I did not get any weird like food cravings or combo <laughs> cravings, but uh, I I chugged gallons of milk. Ch- chugged gallons. Yeah, like in the middle of the night, I would come out to the fridge, get the carton of milk, and just, you know. Huh? No, because it was just like, no, it was too much. I I, I wanted to stand there and chug milk. And I drank so much milk that the doctor was even like, baby, baby, maybe you should cut back a little. He's like, how many gallons are you going through a week? And I was like, maybe two or three. Well, you didn't need to take the calcium pills then, right? No, I was fine with calcium. I didn't have, like, it wasn't dairy, though. It wasn't like, oh, I want ice cream. Oh, I want the... It was just milk. And it had to be Horizon brand, organic. It had a different taste. It tasted vanilla-y. I don't know. There you go. Okay. What's a purchase you really regret making? And I'll give you a moment to think because Molly and I, this 
some are like fishing magnets. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we had fun with those. You, you take a really super powerful magnet that can lift like 800 pounds and you throw it into the river and we thought we were going to pull out treasure. <laughs> oh, please. Junk. <laughs> we cleaned the river. We had an old. Well, that's good. That's good. That's where most of the equipment here came from. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we got a bunch of nails. We got, yeah, just junk. Mm -hmm. So Nyla, what about what did you buy? Um, I, I don't have anything that good. Um, the first thing that popped in my head, um, I think is just kind of stuck there right now. Um, but the the thing I think I regret buying is. There are these two mats that I have that I bought for my son's room in pregnancy. So this is kind of like a nesting buy. Um, and I was like, oh, he'll have so much fun with it. And they were $50 each and I bought them. I know I haven't said what they are. So, um, so I bought them, I brought them home and everybody who's seen it is just like, I mean, it's cool, but really you spend a hundred dollars on this. Um, there are these squares that you put down on the ground and the liquid inside moves. Okay. <laughs> no, it sounds 100 bucks, man. <laughs> are they like flooring tile type squares? Yeah, they're like flooring tiles. Like, so that's what it, it looks like. And now I just have them where I change my son and I step on them instead of him like hitting it or messing with it. Um, yeah, that was... I mean, it was just a ridiculous amount of money for something so simple. Okay. Any bad buys? Oh, me? Oh, it's a long list. I don't know how much time we have. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> What's the most epic way you've seen someone quit or be fired? Oh, wow. Um, most epic way I've seen someone be fired? I can give you some time here. I was like 16 years old and it was the first time I was breaking up with a girl. And I didn't really know how to do it. And she was this like farm girl or whatever. So I went with the comedy route, <laughs> which I learned. I told her that her crops have expired. <laughs> that didn't go over well, <laughs> but I was young and dating. And I don't know. That's kind of like a firing. We're broken up. I thought you were going to go into your your one. Oh, you want to talk about breakups too? Yeah, I've seen an epic breakup um, in public, which was all silence, and it was it was most amazing. It was at a comedy festival, and um, so I went to Big Sky Comedy Festival, and this is a predominantly like uh, Caucasian town, <laughs> and um, and so there was this one couple that came into the comedy festival in the room and you notice this girl right away she was this, this ethnic beauty just gorgeous woman gorgeous woman and so she's sitting there and she has two of her friends with her and her boyfriend who's also like a latino kind of mix and so they were very like you notice them you know in a sea of white people um and so you would see them like constantly like be like motioning to each other and having fun throughout the evening the comedians were flirting with the girl um during their sets and then this one comedian kate willett got up on set on on stage and she did this joke all about um like how your ex did all these like crazy things sexually with you um and it it was obvious like she was laughing a little too hard at the jokes and the boyfriend was like, why are you laughing so hard? And then she was like motioning to her friends and her friends and her were laughing together. And then he was like, what the hell? And this is all silent and it's just going back and forth. And all me and the comedians are standing here and we're just watching them. Kate's doing a great set, but we're just watching this happen. And then all of a sudden she's like, oh, get over it. <laughs> and it's like, no. It was just all back and forth. Um, anyways, he ended up getting up and leaving, and they were gone for about 20 minutes, and then he came back, paid for the drinks, and then he left and left her there, and she ended up, like, getting roses from the comedians, and I was just like, hmm, that was that was the most interesting breakup I've ever seen in public, and literally not one word. It was all hand motions. It was so amazing. 
great. Oh. I would think that he should just be happy that he's with such a gorgeous girl and keep his <laughs> mouth shut and don't ask any specific questions. Yeah. Lori says a guy at work fell asleep. They set him outside with a note taped on him. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> He must have been really asleep if you can carry yeah. him outside. Yeah. <laughs> he slept through them, picking him up and taking him outside. I'll, I'll, I got fired from the Montleon Hotel in New Orleans. I was a room service waiter for, we were super busy and I brought a breakfast up. We were short of warmers without the warmer to put the, the food inside. There was not a complaint, but the food and beverage manager saw me go up without a warmer, a warmer because they would take a lot longer. And it's just a little container with like a sterno can inside. It's like we were running really busy. He came back. He told me to take off my, take off my vest. And I was done. <laughs> and I was like, are you for real? Are you seriously firing me? So I left and, uh, Human Resources called me. The manager of Human Resources called me in, and he had a talk with me, and he said, I'm going to see if I can get you your job back. And they agreed to take me back, but I said, hell no. Yeah. I'm not going to stay at a job that's going to fire me after I'd been there for a while like that. I had found something else anyway, and I moved on. Wow. I was working at McDonald's. Molly likes this story. And uh, the girl, the girl in drive through just came, punched out, and walked out really fast. She quit. I go in drive through. Turns out she shit her pants so bad, she shit up her back, out her neck hole, and the shit hit the ceiling. <laughs> she didn't. We had to mail her her final check. She wouldn't come in and she pick it up. She was embarrassed. Huh? Yeah, she was just. Well, she must have she been just really got sick. up and walked out, right? She just got up and yeah. walked out and. They're like, okay, Tom, you're in drive through like, No, I'm not. No, we need to shut this place yeah. down. And you're constantly looking at this. I'm like, sky. how much is it force fall? did is it, it go fall? out your neck hole and hit the ceiling? And that just goes pressure. to show you don't eat at McDonald's. Right. Nowadays. That's a fast food place. This is like, <clears throat> they should have shut down to make sure that everything Nope, I was, was... mopping the ceiling. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's terrible. All right. If there was one crime you could not be convicted of, you get to choose the crime. What crime are you choosing? Oh. Um. Well, I think the most. Mm, I think robbing a bank. Yes. Yes. Exactly. I want my bank. I want my bank. bank. Yeah. He set you up pretty nice. I don't know. You can't get convicted. Get to keep the money. Well, you didn't say you get to keep the Yeah, money. well, yeah. Can't get, get away with it. Get I don't away know. I was thinking just shoplifting. Just go in anywhere I want with a cart and just walk out. But if you got, if you could rob a bank without getting convicted, you can just go buy the stuff. Just go into a car dealership, grab the keys, and shoplift whatever's on the Stealing the overall in general. Really? Stealing. Yeah, just stealing. Stealing is good. Stealing. Still is good if you don't have to <laughs> if you don't suffer have to... the consequences. Molly, what crime are oh Molly's murder? Molly's going with murder. I'm done. You're done. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, you I don't it? know. These like murder mystery like little shows that are all over the place kind of has me thinking, like, well, if I just didn't do that, then I could get away with it. Yeah, <laughs> chicks should not be allowed to watch those yeah, murder really, well, or really evil. Because you can really nitpick where they went wrong and that how you <laughs> wouldn't have done it. You're always I, thinking about killing. I know how I'd do it. <laughs> that's how you learn to get away with it. Right. Yeah. That's why you're saying we shouldn't watch it. No, you no you're not allowed. <laughs> What's the most expensive thing you have broken? Um, Most expensive thing I've broken were always other people's cars and not, well, yeah. So... <laughs> I was working for Radio Disney and I was backing up or something and I hit the side mirror of of the van and it shattered the glass in the side mirror and I just dropped it off <laughs> that day. And like a couple days later I got a call and they're like, hey, do you know what happened to the mirror? I was like, no, no it was fine when I saw it. <laughs> like, 
Totally denied Mental it. No, do not <laughs> give Nyla the keys to your car. <laughs> yeah, that was the Radio Disney band. And um, yeah, they actually, those bosses actually like were a part of my previous like marriage, my wedding. And yeah, they still don't know. Um, they might know now, but. Um, <laughs> and then the other one was I was trying to pull my car or no, I was trying to pull a van, a production van into a driveway that was like really weirdly slanted and the owner of the house's daughter's car was in front of me and I just hit the accelerator just a little too hard and rammed it Ooh. and a little puncture just a nice little round I don't know how it happened but a nice little round puncture happened and then I was just like uh I don't know what to do and the person in charge of production basically um made me work three times on three different gigs to pay that off. She was like, you're just not going to get paid. I'm going to save money. I was like, okay. Don't they have insurance? Did I have insurance? No, don't they have insurance? That's what I was like. Can't like the insurance company handle it? Like, yeah, I don't want them calling me and things like that. But, you know, um, I don't know. They just didn't want to handle it through insurance because like, I guess it would affect like the production and things like that. Like, I don't know. They just didn't want to go through. So high if they know you're driving around with their stuff. What? Their insurance would go sky high if they know you're driving around in the stuff. Thinking, like I'm sure they just kind of wanted to stay away from that, or maybe they didn't have a permit to film there. Like I don't know. Oh, all right. So, but she basically had to pay out of pocket for the damages, and she basically saved money because the next three gigs I worked for free, and they were long gigs. It was like three days each time. Oh. Yeah, Michael, you broke a couple marriages that much. I was going to say heart, 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 hearts was my answer. Yeah. So that, and that was expensive for me. So. Yeah. I broke my ulnar collateral ligament. That was pretty damn expensive. The old Tommy John surgery there. Oh, right. I'm doing too many things. Sorry. What do you got going, Will? Expensive what, thing you broke. That I broke. Hmm. All right. <laughs> um, what's your cure for hiccups? <laughs> um, I don't know. Just hold your breath. Hold your breath. <laughs> Spoonful of peanut butter. Gets rid of them every time for me. Yeah, my, my wife has this trick she swears by. You put a straw in your mouth, and then you close your she closes and holds your ears, and then you chug a glass of water. So right. she's holding your ear, ear. She closes your ears up. You put the straw in your mouth, and then you drink the the uh, glass of water through the straw, like in your mouth. So you she's waterboarding you. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I, I she tells me it's hiccups. I think it's attempted homicide. But um, you know. Interesting. Yeah, it's a, it's an age old trick, I guess. I, I I would hold the breath. Just hold the breath. Molly. I think for me, it's normally like peanut butter, but the peanut butter just kind of helps you hold your breath and give you something else to focus on. How do you eat? You eat peanut butter holding your breath? Yeah. <laughs> you can breathe through your nose when you eat. Shut up. Well, it's, she has a peanut allergy. She can't breathe it in. <laughs> she can't breathe it in. I think it's just another version of it. I do both. Okay. You get an all expense paid trip to Romania. The only catch is you have to stay in Vlad the Impaler's castle alone, lit by torches and candles only. And he is Dracula. Do I do I go? Is the question? Do you go, yeah. No. You ain't staying there. No. All expenses. They'll give you tours of Romania. But you just All said you just said I'm staying there alone. And eternal yeah. life. Eh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm probably not going either. It's all expense paid, which means basically they're just paying for me to fly there and back. Or well, no, I'm saying they'll take you around. You'll do like an Anthony Bourdain. But at night, what is in Romania besides Vlad the Impaler's? No, Why wait, you to find out. I mean, it sounds interesting. I lived in Greece for a year. It's not that far from yeah. Romania. I would imagine it's similar to would Greece. Would you do it? Sure. You ain't afraid. Yeah. I'm not afraid. You know, I'm not afraid of ghosts and vampires. <laughs> like, is there Wi-Fi? He's such a puss. Is there Wi-Fi? He's, he says that his uh, um, probably his not. Is, um, then no. Is there Wi-Fi? <laughs> sure. If there's water. Wi-Fi, then yes. Yeah. See, look, there you go. If there's Wi-Fi. Plugging your ears. <clears throat> yep, works every time. 
I've never heard that one. Okay. Wow. Actually, actually, the straw you bite the straw. I've and drink never the water heard that. Over it. Yeah. You bite a straw and you drink the water over the straw. Yeah. What's it's how like can you bite the straw and drink the water? It's yeah. probably because there's so much stuff going on that that you're focusing on that you forget you forget that you're, you got hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get them that much anymore. I can't remember the last time I had hiccups. Okay. Do oh. you? You get them a lot? Do you have like hiccup menopause? You hit a <laughs> certain age, you don't Maybe. get hiccups I anymore? can't remember. Well, you know, I also don't eat as spicy as I used to. As I get older, I can't eat the kind of spicy stuff I used to eat. Damn, that sucks being a New Orleans guy. It, it, it does. Speaking of spicy, we'll finish up with this one. The flats versus drummies on chicken wings. What? Flats versus drummies on chicken oh, wings? Oh, flats all the way. Flats? I'm a drummy guy. I like I'm a drummy guy too. I, I like them both though. Yeah, I like if you got a good wing, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I'm I'm a beta male, so it's gotta be boneless. Oh, oh my it's gotta God. be what? Boneless beta male. <laughs> boneless. Boneless beta male. I think I think with the drums, and I'm I'm actually passionate about this subject. So okay. I think with the drums when you bread it and stuff um it just i don't know it's just like too much but with the flats when they're nice and crispy oh those are so good i don't know it's me i like it's chewing hard. the hard cartilage and stuff he finishes my wings after i've finished them <clears throat> oh, so wow. then you don't clear you don't clean the bone you don't no, clean the the bone. Bone. Yeah. so you leave that for him no yeah yeah i'm the dog <laughs> she puts it in him? my bowl <laughs> on the floor he says flats i like the flats or i will occasionally go with the boneless but it has to have the sauce on the side because otherwise it ruins it well you can dip the sauce oh, i agree with sauce on the side but then it's just like it's like chicken nuggets you know yeah. but sometimes you feel like chicken nuggets instead. i'm so disappointed in you michael that's it i'm used <laughs> to it by now boneless. Yeah. i'm used to it i'm full of disappointment mitchell's watching as well hi mitchell hey mitchell hey mitchell <laughs> all right that was the hot seat let's get on okay. with this interview. all right nyla durani how you doing today so you got your hands full there yeah, You're doing pretty good, I think. He's falling asleep now, so I'm going to be a lot more calmer in my voice. But yeah, <laughs> doing good. All right, so you do all sorts of casting. You're a casting director and producer? Yeah, so I cast for, um, I've cast for shows like uh, um, Trust Me, I'm a Game Show host on TBS. I've helped with Naked and Afraid. I've mm -hmm. cast on The Gong Show, Undercover Boss. Uh, most recently, uh, The Masked Singer, and right now I, uh, I'm working on AGT. Oh, how does one go about becoming a character? I'm sorry, not The Masked Singer. See, I, I was just going to say. Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's in your head. Yeah. But I, think I work on I Can See Your Voice, and right now I'm working on America's Got Talent. All right. That's awesome. How do you become a casting director? Um, I kind of feel like I personally, I feel like I fell into it in a sense. It wasn't something I was um, looking to actually do. Um, I went to school and was in like all the TV production classes and yada, yada, yada in high school. And then I went to college, I ended up leaving college. I don't think I, I like using the word dropping out. I just stopped going because um, I was going to community college and it just, I was working so much and I was working for a radio station and I just, I was working so much and I had so many things that I was wanting to do that I just wasn't putting it all into college. Um, ended up moving to Los Angeles and then I got into doing like PA work, being on set, working in like coordinating. And then someone said to me, they're like, you know, you really like asking questions and talking to people. Have you thought about going into casting? And I was like, no. And so I took a job in casting. I just took like a freelance gig and fell in love with it. And I love every part of it. I haven't worked on script things, um, but I have worked on game shows. I've worked on, you know, like docu-series in-house, like party house shows and things like that. Um, um, and, you know, talent-based shows, business shows. So everything but, but script, essentially. 
Also judging comedy competition. Yeah. So um, in the last like three years, I was really trying to figure out um, how somebody asked me once like, oh, how is casting evolved? And I was just like, uh, I think it's just evolved from less walking, you know, like people just don't have to put, you know, foot to ground as much. Um, we do everything through emails and you can submit online and this, that, whatever. And so um, I started thinking, I was like, well, what would happen if I just put myself out there and like just started talking to people one-on-one, -on -one, going to festivals, going to competitions. Um, and so I started reaching out and festivals wanted me to come. Um, so I came and uh, I've, I've gone to now, I think I've gone to about 25 comedy festivals nationwide in total um, since that idea came into my head. And um, on top of that, I, I go to other festivals like Cirque Festival, Circus Festivals, um, um, alt, alt comedy, um, and also like burlesque and, and those variety acts and things like that. I go to that stuff as well. Um, because with AGT and the Gong Show, we're casting variety. So I've really allowed myself to hone in on certain communities. And the comedy community has definitely been like the most welcome. That's awesome. Could I, I, I forgot to do something. Would you mind if I gave out presents real quick? Oh yeah, totally. Go ahead. I, All right. I'm going to put you in the crew. So sorry, I totally okay. Didn't. We'll pop you down and. Well, yeah, here we go. We'll do this. This is for William. Awesome. Thank and you. here you go, Michael. Molly, you got your present over there. Oh, I do. Yeah. You got your All present. Right. I set it right there. So go ahead. Get we, it. We haven't been in the studio together since Christmas. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Oh, <laughs> bring her up, Mal. She's right there. Bring her she up. Oh. She is. Hey, oh. she is. Speaking of burlesque, how awesome is that? that Merry is Christmas, awesome. gentlemen. I promise I, I will. Hope you had a really happy holiday. It's I out of keep it in the frame. I look promise. at that. Elmay's panties. Elmay's uh, panties. Uh, I cut the back out. She uh, personalized it for you. That's look, so awesome. you can read the back. Flip it over. There you oh, go. Wow. Michael, what did you get? <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I'm going to tell go in at the I'm, Molly. I'm still digesting this one. <laughs> I'm assuming I'm the one on the far left. One with the small wiener in the eye. I got panties too. Show them. Oh, wow. They're really cute. You got a pair of Lots. Elmay panties. Nice. Thank you, Al. <laughs> for everybody. I got a pair of Elmay panties I keep in my pocket Bye. for good luck. <laughs> Wait, you can't see it. <laughs> Mike, did you get a pair of Elmay Hold on. Panties? Molly, pull yourself up. Okay. Off the rails. Pull there yourself you go. up on the big screen, Mal, so we can see Molly, put, yeah. make yourself the big screen so yeah, we can I'm see. I'm working on it. There, you go. there we go. That is an <laughs> off-the-rails portrait. <laughs> we got Molly with the big bush and her pterodactyl feet. <laughs> I'm totally ripped. Who drew that? I drew that. Tom That's drew an original Klein. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a print. Yeah, where's your where's the signature there, Tom? There's William, and then there's Michael with his little alien body. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> 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 I hope uh, you have your spaceship <laughs> and you fly to help the jury where you live. Fucking <laughs> alien. I hope Stephanie. <laughs> oh, bring oh her God. up. <laughs> um. Oh, geez. So oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank no, you're welcome. Wonderful. Yeah. That's I, great. I uh, that's so wanted you to know that you had much worth. <laughs> what? That you had great worth. <laughs> I wanted to let you know. Okay. That's wonderful. Oh, oh, I got oh he's got a pair too. I he's got, got a pair of panties too from El May. El May certified. It's, it's a point answer over and over again about the worth of my worn underwear. So I wanted you guys each to have some. That's awesome. <laughs> I know, because I, I obsess on it. I talk about it just about every week. You do? Yes, because I thought 25 bucks is a good deal. <laughs> I still think that. So we just figured it'd be a fun a fun gift. What do you yeah. guys think? Thank you. Very wonderful. Put that right above your fireplace. <laughs> you <everyone> see. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. I'm going to bring Yours it to work. Too. And I'm going to put it up in my workspace. <laughs> you think they'll be okay with that? I think so. 
<laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Merry Christmas, well, guys. And you're going to be around for the next episode, right? Yes, I sure will. So I'll nice. see you guys. All right. Wow. She's going to join us for episode for two. Episode. Sounds great. So yeah. thank you so much. Thanks, Elmay. Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas, guys. Christmas <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. That's a great picture of her, too. <laughs> All right. So oh, wow. <laughs> We're back. So. <laughs> All right. Now oh, you can make her big screen again. But I did want to say this about Nyla. I met her at the World Series of Comedy when we were um, performing. It was in Indiana. And um, I think you were one of the judges for my show. And uh, there wasn't a great audience. It was like kind of a rural area. It was a big casino. They had a great room. It was a great room. It wasn't a lot of, I wasn't hearing a lot from the audience. So I was feeling a little down. And, um, she came right up to me and sat down with me. She had taken notes and she had given me very, a lot of encouragement. She told me, get some small clips. I think you said 60 to 90 seconds and send them so you could share them with the other producers, which I never did. But um, <laughs> because I, I first, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm like, I don't think I'm TV clean, but I have been writing and performing more clean material since then because I'm getting a certain age and some of the dirty stuff was cute at one time, but now if I want to have a broader appeal, I'm trying yeah. to add um, material that can be done on television. And that's what I tell people all the time at festivals. I think that's like the one thing I just constantly say is, you know, you're really funny the way you're writing. And I acknowledge that like, the way you're writing is really good. The way you're delivering is good. Your stage presence is good, but trying to come up with a routine that is right for television, some formats, others not, you know, like what, what can go on tonight's show might not go on my show, you know, that I'm working on. Um, so, you know, I just tell people just to make sure that they do have a good five minutes even, or 10 minutes of just clean material. And there's always ways to take more adult material or just, you know, more up there, uh, less TV clean and clean it up. You know, there are ways to do that. Yeah. Right. And, and then I saw you a second time in Indianapolis, another contest. Oh, that's right. And, and uh, what yeah. I didn't realize, because I think you were going to visit, you have family, I think you're going to visit your grandmother, I think. Yeah, you, yeah my grandmother was when we were at the World Series of Comedy, yeah. But it was a two-day thing, which I didn't realize. I thought it was just a one-day contest. And I advanced to the next round. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I have to go back to work. I can't <laughs> stay for the second round, which I didn't realize it was a two-day thing. So, mm -hmm. But that was a great to room, too. Friends. Those people were. Yeah. I, that was a great That room. was a really fun room. I remember yeah, the like, crowd was like, really into it. Yeah, um, yeah they, they actually created that competition. And I went and I judged it. Um, yeah, I think what makes me stand out and why William appreciates me is when you go to comedy festivals, you'll see a lot of industry people like myself sitting in the back having a drink, which is all fan, fine and good. I used to drink a lot more. I don't, I don't anymore. And um, I kind of saw it as taking advantage of the situation. Um, you were sitting there and enjoying a show, not paying to get in. They were The club was giving you drinks. Um, and if not, like, you know, the, the club was giving you food or they were just making it a lot more better for the situation for you to be there. Um, and you sit there, you watch the show, you say thanks and you leave. I thought, you know, if they're going to pay for me to come to that, like they, no one pays me to be there. No one gives like me a check and says, hey, will you judge this? I'll say you can bring me out there. You just have to buy the flight like and put me up in a hotel um, because I'm not going to take that out of my own you know, pocket. Um, I went up to each comedian and I wrote notes about them when they were performing. And I've done that at every single comedy fest. So you um, ain't special, William. No, but I do, I do appreciate that though. And I, it picked up my spirits because I was feeling like, I was feeling kind of down. And actually that night I had finished third out of a group of killer comics. So yeah. I had done better than I had really thought. And I think a lot of comics feel that way. Like I could have done this better. I could have done that better. She came over and she sat down. She went over her notes with me. And by the time I was done talking to her, I felt much better than I did beforehand. So thank you for that. Aww. That's Aww. awesome. Yeah. 
That's awesome. So when you're going, um, how much crap do you have to weed through before you find someone that you're casting? Um, I mean, I get, right now I have like 100 emails in my inbox. Okay. Um, and I'll probably say out of those 100, a good like 20 or 25 I'll be possibly interested in. Um, the rest I might be like, oh, you're funny or, oh, you're a really good singer. Or, you know, um, please send me more stuff. You know, um, because people do get better. People have auditioned multiple years on my show. Um, you know, people auditioned for season one and then came on season two of the Gong Show. So I see, I see, I see things in everyone, but real like crap, um, yeah. hardly anything. Okay, Molly yeah. can blow snot out her eyeball. <laughs> That's not Ooh. a talent. That's a curse. Ooh, gross. <laughs> Do it. Now. That would have been great for Gong Show. That would be great. I love that show. Are they oh, still she doing is one? switching the topic. I want you to blow snot out your eyeball. No, I don't us. want to see that. I don't want to see that. Nobody, like, nobody, wants, to see nobody that. wants to see that. It's just <laughs> a weird really thing where. Yeah. Why do you want her to do that? Because it's a. It's it's something it's with tip. the ducks in the corner of my eye where they're, I don't know. Should it blow snot? <laughs> I mean, where is that coming from? Well, what I'm you know, probably eyeball, not. You can, you can, the air and yeah. <laughs> she has to plug her eyeball when she blows her. Nose. I have had to, yes. <laughs> or snot just comes out. And she can't see that. Tom eye. looks at me, and I've got like the Kleenex, and I've got it also like up in the corner. <laughs> He's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> Do you have any 60 to 90 second clips of that? No. Yeah, right. Get out of here. She can put her fist in her mouth. Please don't with the eyeball. That's another show, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to because it's gross. That's in the bonus episode, so stick around. No. Tom, Tom I did ask me ahead of time. He's like, can you prepare something? Like, could, could, could you practice just doing that? Yeah, just blowing snot out your eyeball. I'm like, it's not something that I want to do. Yeah. No. That's red, snot readily available. <laughs> it, 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 is, it is pretty cold in here, yeah. Well, he wanted me to try to do that. You know, there's, there, there, there's that um, Guinness Book of World Records where the dude shoots, like, milk out of his oh, eye. Yeah. So he wanted me to practice doing that. I'm like, I have never and will never try doing that because also – gross and you really want milk in there around your eye should be fine there's gonna be no it's no, not supposed not to have milk coming out your eyes no. i can do it with my ears you can wiggle your ears yeah. can you do it now okay. sure no way holy crap you can wiggle his ears look at that no no i got that's it that's weird is that getting William on the show that's no tail. probably not that's no tail. that's superhuman tricks <laughs> I, I don't know if that's superhuman though <laughs> can anyone roll their tongue is that a talent only a certain percentage of the world can do that. I can do it. I can roll it once. I can roll it. But there's the times. people that can do it like three or four. I, I, I can yeah. drink out of it. Yeah, Holy some people cow. could. Yeah, that's nasty. yeah. Uh -huh. That's nasty. Uh -huh. That's not gonna make. You, yeah, baby. You know, she's not gonna cast you for it. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The gong show. That would have yeah. been perfect for the gong show. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You know what? To be honest, when I was working on the gong show, I saw more crap there because people thought they could just do something like that. Yeah. And I was like, oh, sweet baby Jesus, no. What if I rolled my tongue and Molly shot milk out her eye onto no. my tongue? <laughs> yes. 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 We got a show, Mal. You go. <laughs> milk out your eye and I get to the That, hey, that would have been gold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got it, baby, right here. That's awesome. <laughs> there was a couple on the gong show. They were on both seasons. And I think they opened the seasons both years and one of them would put a banana in her mouth, chew it up and then shoot it out of her mouth into her partner's mouth I and he would eat it and swallow it. And that was that one. That's true you love. That, that is true I love. Man. Wow. And they are a real married couple. And you just stole our next segment with that. Hawk uh, the banana loogie across. How far were they hawking it? I mean, across the stage. Wow. Holy cow. You got to get your. Back. Oh yeah, it went up. It was like it had, it had an angle to it. It's an arc. It's almost yeah. like they're shooting shit straight out of the back of your neck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never eating McDonald's again. I swear. <laughs> yeah. What else have you? What other weird stuff? I'm liking this. What other weird things? That I mean, on the Gong Show. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. What's the weirdest thing I cast on the Gong Show? Maybe. 
Um, Cause the gong show was such a fun show to work on. Like there were just so many weird and wonderful. <laughs> um, is it still thing or is it done? It's show? done. I don't I'm think they're coming back. back. Yeah. Can we find that somewhere? On yeah. YouTube, on Hulu. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, look, I don't think I saw the I saw the old one with Chuck Barris. That was awesome. I don't think Gene, yeah. Gene the oh yeah. I mean this one it had Ken John in it, um it had Mike Myers in it, which that was shocking to me that this show didn't go further because Mike Myers was the host. Mm -hmm. oh, I mean, yeah. he didn't come out as Mike Myers, the host. He came out as like another Chuck Barris type of character. He came oh, okay. out pretending to not be okay. Myers. Yeah, he was pretending not to be Mike. He like went on a late night show and was like, oh, I have a new show coming out. And he's like, I don't know who this Mike Myers is. Um, <laughs> but I was surprised it didn't go further. Um Wow, what was the most disgusting thing? I don't, I don't know what was the grossest thing on the show. What about stuff you turned down? Mm. I mean, I, think I don't know. I was, I was more concentrated on getting my acts on the show. I cast these two girls who were cloggers, and um, I was like, wouldn't it be funny? Because they looked exactly the same. They were sisters, but they looked like they could be twins. I was like, wouldn't it be funny if we like dressed you up like like the girls from The Shining and then oh, in the yeah. middle of your clogging, you just like pulled out a knife. <laughs> <laughs> and they did it. Oh, awesome. <laughs> they did it and they made the most amazing. They said they had so much fun making the audition video and they liked like, because it wasn't like me just saying like, do this. It was a conversation we had back and forth. And I was like, well, here's an idea, you know, because they were going down this like horror theme. And I was like, Two girls, two girls, shining, yes, you know, that's where my brain went. And that's kind of also just kind of going into it. That's kind of like what I do. People are like, oh, you just get submissions, you you show it to your producers, and that's your job. And it's like, no, I actually just like William, like I give notes and I'm like, hey, let's possibly like find a way to make this joke a little cleaner, or let's make you a horror theme, you know, clogging twins, mm -hmm. you know. Um and it's through conversations that we make the perfect audition video. And that's when I show it over to the producers and get them approved and get them through the process. Once on any show I work on, once, you know, it goes through my hands um, and either gets approved or not, it's kind of out of my hands. You're with another person at that point. Um, but um, it's really fun working with people um, and, and creating. So America's Got Talent is not the gross level of the gong show type stuff? But I mean, we, on the show, we definitely want, like, gross things. Um, uh, eyeball tongue trick wouldn't shock, get on America's Got down. Talent, though. We've had a person on our show who has poked out his eyes out of his that. head. And then we've also had someone who has, is called the Regurgitator. Um, I think they were on BGT, but they did come on Champions. And uh, they took a they took a uh, an eight ball, swallowed it, and regurgitated it, and like things like that get on the show. So I don't see why not. <laughs> Molly, come on! I know what we're doing the it's rest of the day. It's not happening. You can always Tom. try. You can always try, right? Can't have no in your heart, Tom. I know. I'm always <laughs> slapping down my ideas. <laughs> I do want to ask Molly to cut down some uh, sixty to ninety minute clips of some of my jokes to send to Nyla because she's got that ability. Yeah. I could do Maybe stuff. she could do that for you too. You know what okay. ability Nyla has? She can eat fire. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Let's I talk hear about, about that. that. Yeah. Uh yeah. So um not this past season, so the season before. So it's been about it'll be two years in March, yeah, that I've been doing fire eating. Just and for nine fire, months that it was just eat yeah. fire. Just eat the fire. <laughs> um but it's been the nine months I was pregnant. I did not do it. I did actually do it twice, but I didn't know I was pregnant yet. So, but after I found out, I stopped. So, just for everybody who's like, oh, you got you were pregnant. No, I didn't. Um, so yeah, just like comedy and going to comedy festivals. I was really trying to figure out ways to um, the variety act world isn't so open to television all the time. Um, in for any show. And so I was trying to figure out like how to introduce myself to people and, and get into that world. And I go to a lot of shows, I'd introduce myself and I wasn't being as 
as a warm receptive as again like the comedy community so what i decided to do was i'll take a couple classes in sideshow type of things and i took fire eating and thought okay well I'll, I'll introduce myself to the instructor we'll have a good conversation i'll take the class i won't i won't end up doing it i'm like oh ah, no i'm not gonna do it <laughs> i ended up i ended up actually doing it and after i have the video of it and and i don't think i've been that excited about something since i was a teenager maybe like it was the, the rush the excitement the fact that i actually achieved it overcame fear um it was it was amazing and then she was like you want to do it again i was like yeah let's do it again and <laughs> i just took off from there and um now when i reach out to people and i start talking to them and i'm like and they're like oh i want to do this fire trick and i'm like well actually i'm also a fire eater so i understand that you want to do that trick but because of the laws and and the fire codes we're not able to do it because of x y and z and i just kind of like slickly like tell people in the community of that that community that i do that because then all, all of a sudden they're like oh she's one of us oh she understands because when i was learning how to fire eat my teacher would also be like, well, we can't do this because of this. You have to keep the thing away from you because of this. And so it just, it just makes me sound a little more knowledgeable when I'm talking to these talents and, and they feel a little bit more respected. Did you get heartburn from it? No, it's yeah, super simple. Do you have to take after you eat fire. So I'll tell you how it's done. It's like a magic trick. It's so simple. <laughs> so First of all, always have a glass of like ice water beside you because it is fire. You are putting it near your face, like have ice water around you. And then the next thing that would you do, you have a stick. And um, I think my sticks are, I think my sticks are in my car. Um, but you have a stick and this stick has a certain type of material on the top of it. So it's a long stick and on the top it has this material that when it soaks up the uh, lighter fluid, when it soaks it up, it actually evaporates, you know, with the heat also and lighter fluid, like it eventually evaporates um, and it cools down. And so it doesn't, it's not burning. It's not like you're putting a piece of metal in your mouth. Um, I've never burned myself and I've been doing it for almost two years. And when I touch it to my tongue, um, basically the wetness of my tongue singes that tip of where it's touching. Once I close my mouth around it, the oxygen is closed off and it goes out. So it's um, just a magic trick. It's all about how you angle it. It's how you breathe. So you're not sucking it in. Obviously you're breathing out. So as it's coming near your face, you're breathing it out. So it's pushing away from your face, you're singeing it on your tongue. And once you have that fire is away from your face, once you have your mouth around the, the thing at the top, it goes out. It's so, it's so easy. I have a small <laughs> mouth and a plastic retainer. You take that out. Should I not even try? No, I've actually nope. saw a guy with facial hair taking the class when I was taking the class and he was fine. So I've taught, I've taught um, a booker out of Canada. She was at the San Diego Comedy Festival and we went in the back of the, <laughs> of the establishment in the parking lot. And we, I was doing all these fire tricks with um, everybody because I know about four tricks and that's about it. But I was doing everybody's hands, like rubbing the fire on their hands. And then she was like, I want to learn. And I taught her in 10 minutes and she did it twice in front of everybody. And she did say on video that I was not responsible for any harm that might come to her um, before I do have that on video. Um, but yeah, that was you could blow fire out your eye. Dude, that's, that would, that's a winner there. <laughs> that one would hurt sure. going hot coals. <laughs> Devil towel. Fire out your eyeball. No. Into your mouth. <laughs> Into my mouth. I'll eat it. Leave my eyes alone. By the way, she is teaching classes online. So if you want to take a class, just let me know. How much are the sticks? The sticks themselves, I think. Um, we're 15 or $20. Uh, I'll make my own. Awesome. <laughs> don't make your own. That's something you don't want to mess with. Yeah, I, feel it, it, man. I can make a did, fire stick. I know, but you make it out of wood cool. and then she puts stuff around it so it doesn't catch on fire and it doesn't get hot. This homemade thing you're going to do <laughs> sounds like a bad idea. Yeah, oh, homemade oh, nowadays. Save money somewhere else. That was Leave Tom's last ourselves. And you just go to Walmart and you just get the you just get the lighter flu a, a certain type of lighter fluid. But it's fun. Everyone should put themselves in a situation like that and learn a trick. 
Yeah. <laughs> See, I want to get Tom to like skydive or something. Never. He will never do it. She I'll die on the way down. Food. You'll make homemade fire sticks, but you won't go skydiving. No. He's got heights. I got a fear of heights. Yeah. Well, that's how you get over it with fire sticks. <laughs> oh yeah. So, um, what you got coming up next here, Nyla? Um, so right now, um, my friends are casting for, um, I can see your voice season two. So I'm like throwing names at them. Um, for anybody who wants to audition for that show, you know, I'm definitely just throwing names at my friends. I'm like, Hey, you should check out this person. Um, so I can see your voice. If you haven't seen it, it's a Ken John show where he hosts it. And, um, um, somebody playing the game, like a contestant is playing a game and they're showing eight people. And out of those eight people, some of them are good singers. Some of them are bad singers. And it's up to the contestant to try to figure out how uh, who the good and bad are and knock out all the bad because the last person standing is going to sing with one of the celebrities and you want a good duet, not a bad and a good duet. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a really fun show and they're casting for season two right now and I think it's filming in the spring. Um, but I'm always casting for America's Got Talent. I'm always looking for people um, who are you know, able to get a two minute, around a 90 second to two minute audition tape to me. Um, I take a look at it um, and I'd, I'd love to just check it out and see if I can help them get on the show. Um, and, and, and then, you know, who knows what next year is gonna bring and how everything's gonna happen. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, where does everybody uh, send their clips to? Oh, they send it to my email. So I always ask for people to send it as unlisted YouTube links. Um, and then, so I don't have to download stuff on my computer. And it's easy for me to share with my producers. Mm -hmm. And then they send it to my email, which is my first name, Nyla, N-A-E-L-A, castingproduction at gmail.com. Can, can I ask you a quick question? Always. Did you cast Darcy Lynn? Yes. Oh, uh, she's fantastic. She's she's amazing. You know who Darcy Lynn is, right? No, I don't. She does the uh, she has the puppets. She's the singer. She's what? How old was she when she was on? I mean, she was. So she was twelve years old when she was on the show. She was eleven when I started talking to her. It's funny because I was on Facebook and I found her through a hashtag, and I was like, "Oh my God, you guys should totally come to um, auditions in Houston." And so they came from Houston, auditioned at one of our you know uh, in person casting calls, you know, and. She got on the show and won. Yeah, she she's incredible. You gotta you gotta look it up. Okay. I mean, she's she's just amazing. And she like melts your heart. Like literally, like you're just like, oh, and she's really like that in person. I remember when I met her, I was excited to meet her mom because I'd been talking to her mom so much. And so when she met me, she didn't know who I was. Um, but she was just so sweet and like quiet and shy. She was like, Oh, hi, how are you? And I was so just sweetest girl. Very cool. Very That's one of the things I loved about her story, too, is because she came on and she said, if I remember, that the puppets is something that she got into because she was so shy and like, mm -hmm. and it was a way. Oh, for I her do to... remember that now. Yeah. 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 Did you guys see any of the comedians that were on this past season who had no audience? Yes, I did. I did they did an amazing good. job, I think. That's tough for comedians. Yeah. Yeah, with no audience. They just had a bunch of like screens like um, Oh no, not even that. Really? Before so right when COVID hit and everything was shut down, um, we were in the middle of our first round of production of like of, of first auditions. And um so we couldn't have an audience. And so we had one, two, three, one, two, three, four, four people audition, four comedians audition with just the judges. Yeah. No screens. No audience. Highly suggest you looking up John Hastings. Um, he was on and he, I think out of everybody who performed with no audience, I think he did a killer job. And I think when people are like, oh, my audience sucked that night. I'm always like, go look at John's tape that he did. He did. You can kill with no audience at all. Um, so I'm using that as an example now. Oh, the, the audience sucked. I'm like, no, your energy sucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do it again. Like, um, but John Hastings did a killer job and he actually like used the production crew at like like as like uh, oh, what is it called? Um, <laughs> just like interacting. <laughs> Yeah. Are y'all coming to the Midwest to do like an in-person thing? Or no, that? everything's virtual. So just sign up on agtauditions.com and, and we're having virtual auditions. Um, I think mid, mid late 
uh, January. I think it's like around the 23rd. Don't quote me. Go to the website. Okay. Um, but we are having virtual auditions this year um, because we're not able to go. And tell her that you saw her on Off the Rails. That will help. <laughs> <laughs> Nyla, you have been wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, no, thank you, thank you guys. Thank you. I always love find us now? You can find us everywhere on social media, Off the Rails TM. Any uh, social media presence, you can find us there. Also, if you're feeling generous, look at our uh, Patreon page and uh, tip us a buck or two or ten. Um, <laughs> whatever you got. Go also, the Amazon link. If go to our website, if yep. you shop on Amazon, go to off the rails tm.com, click the Amazon link. We get a kickback and get ready, universe. We are switching slowly off of Facebook and we're going to be on YouTube only. So we'll still put the link up, but we'll still be on Facebook. We'll still we'll be on Amazon. Facebook, but we'll be doing the live on yes. YouTube. So we're going to be kind of scooching over there a little bit. Just just a sidestep. You can still find us and listen to us. So. And Scooching past you. Our YouTube channel actually is under Off the Rails TM like everything else. Yep, so it's really easy to find. Own Just easy to find. Subscribe. And Nyla Durrani, thank you again. Thank you so much. Have fun. Thank you, guys. Oh, um, sleeps well. Nyla, is the little guy asleep now? Oh, yeah. he's He fell Would asleep like while we were talking. The second hour with us. If... Well, you got El May coming. Oh, we have El May coming? Yeah. Oh, I'm well, sorry. Either way. You <laughs> No, he's asleep. I'm gonna get some things done. <laughs> All right, thank you, so much. Thank you very much. Hey, we have you. Jason rolling at the end of the month on the 30th. Oh, I love Jason. Say off the rails, sent you. you Bye, get <laughs> I want one. You have one for me? Uh, go to Coldwell Banker I and I'll, I'll mail you. <laughs> right, cool universe. Uh, check out all the fun stuff going on at Big Laugh Comedy Network and. Remember, universe, we're not good.